Hold up, so before this video starts, I need to let y'all know that your girl recently opened up YouTube channel memberships. So if you're interested in getting access to perks like our private Discord server, other exclusive videos and live streams that nobody else on the internet gets to experience, consider becoming a member. So go ahead and head into my description box where I have some information about how you can join. Now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Hey you guys, my name is Asmara and I'm so excited for this video. Today I am sharing my PC build. So I just got this awesome baby right here. Um, she is a baby, it's a her. Um, I got her recently and I am in love and I wanted to share with you guys a little bit of my history with computers, sort of where it took me both mentally and like literally to get to this place where I could build this this PC. So this video is going to be a bit of a story time mixed with like practical steps uh, of how you can build a PC if you've never built one before and are maybe looking to, um, or if you just need ideas for components, uh, this will also list my PC specs if anybody's interested. This is not the video to watch if you are looking for somebody showing you how to actually build a PC. I'm just telling you how I built the parts and sort of my computer history story. Uh, if you actually want to see somebody else build it, go watch another video. <laughs> so there's of course going to be chapters or timestamps down below if you just want to skip to the particular part of the video that you want. But I'd love it if you stuck around throughout the whole thing, but I won't be offended. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. The idea of having a PC has always been kind of this elusive idea in my mind. When I was, you know, in middle school, that's when I started like watching gaming YouTube. And, you know, I thought it was always really cool to see YouTubers like setups and their like desk tours and stuff like that. But I never thought I would actually be able to get to a place where I can um, have one, let alone afford it. When I first started being introduced to the world of like gaming and like PC gaming. I was again in middle school and I only really played games that I had access to that were inexpensive enough and accessible to me at that time. And all of that was done on this bad boy right here. It's literally ginormous. Um, this is like one of those Sims 3 <laughs> laptops that they have in the base game. Uh, this is where I learned how to edit on back in Windows Movie Maker. I played Sims, Sims 3. It was laggy as hell. You know, I spent 20 minutes just getting into the game <laughs> and I played a lot of Minecraft with my friends. I used to play Club Penguin. <laughs> all the games on this guy. This laptop literally does, does not even turn on, um, but I still have her because of the memories. Fast forward to high school. I was still playing Sims 3 mostly and sometimes Minecraft. I remember Build Battle, an iconic mini game, and I was still making videos around this time. So I wanted to get a new computer that would be an upgrade from my laptop as it was starting to get slow and it was like a few years old at that time. So I got a all-in-one desktop computer for my 15th birthday. I was like, yo, literally the only thing I want for my birthday, I just want a computer. <laughs> and so that's the year where I upgraded to a desktop computer. And to me, that was like the best thing in the world. It was an all-in-one. So I literally didn't have to do any like part picking. I didn't have to, you know, set up anything or put much thought into it. Me and my dad just, you know, we went to Best Buy a few times, found a computer that we liked. And that is just what I ended up playing Sims, Minecraft and making videos on. Here's a picture of my setup. <laughs> I had a blue snowball mic and I stacked it on top of tissue boxes because I didn't have a mic arm around that time. Real professional in these streets. <laughs> and towards the end of the lifespan of that computer, I also started picking up a couple of different games like Stardew Valley and even like some story driven games like Life is Strange. So that was like my intermediate computer. I had that for the entirety of like my high school career. So I got it when I was 15 back in 2016. And then I had it all the way up until it died uh, in 2019. As I was going throughout high school, I was getting more serious with the video production work. Um, I took a media, a video production class and I started editing on Premiere Pro. So when I first started using that computer, I was using less demanding programs. And then as I was approaching my later years in high school, I was doing more demanding programs. I told the story a couple times, but that previous computer I had died one day, like I turned it off and it never turned back on. And it was actually a very inconvenient 
convenient time for it to like literally stop working because I was like in the middle of doing college applications. Thankfully, all my files were stored on an external hard drive, um, like the important stuff. I also was in like a couple of clubs where I, my main job was to video edit. And so I needed to be able to edit <laughs> for those clubs. I was computerless, but I ended up making it work. I remember I went into school several days early so that I can edit with Premiere on the school computers. We found solutions. We were, you know, self-sufficient in these streets, but I definitely needed a computer. I figured it was hard for me to like be, you know, doing what I do, which is a lot of video production work, media production work. It's hard to do that without actually having a computer. But my dad offered to help me buy my next computer. So I decided on getting an iMac because I was going to college for film production. That was the plan is I was gonna go for film production and I wanted something that could last me throughout school. That was powerful enough for me to edit on since my projects were starting to get more complex and more detailed around this time and just overall be my multimedia machine. And so Macs are known for being good in that department. Uh, which is why we went looking for Macs. I had never had a Mac before pre-2019. I've only have had an iPhone and an iPod, never an Apple computer. So that was sort of my introduction to the wondrous world of MacBooks and iMacs. And I ended up deciding on an iMac because I really do like having a desktop computer. Um, I like the big screen and uh, that's just my preference of how to work and so i decided on an imac before a macbook my dad and i did a lot of research we looked at a, bun a bunch of different models and a bunch of different price ranges but because i wanted something that would last me a long time and be durable uh, i decided to go with a 2017 imac it had a 5k retina display it had an intel i7 processor with four cores i believe it was 4.2 gigahertz clock speed and i upgraded it to 16 gigs of ram so that was my machine since 2019 up until recently 2021 and i'll talk about what happened to it in a little bit later on in the story and i mainly got it because i just needed a computer because it was just hard for me to be a senior in high school going into college not having any computer because at this time i also did not have a laptop like i've only really been a strictly desktop user but as i started to have it and i was definitely really grateful for it so i don't want to seem like i was i'm complaining or anything um and I was able to do a lot of video production stuff and all that just fine. But what I started to realize is that um, how much I guess I missed gaming and how much I missed having a PC. Now that I look back, I think what it was that I missed um, or what I regretted is giving up on the dream or giving up on the idea that I could own a computer that I could build a PC because I felt like PCs were for people who were real gamers. <laughs> P PCs or people were for people who were technical. So I was struggling with this idea of feeling like I was worthy of being a gamer. I felt like gamers had to look a certain way, act a certain way, and be interested in certain things. I struggled with, you know, men <laughs> telling me that playing Sims is not a real game, quote unquote, or what the, the types of games I was interested in were not real games, uh, those types of things sort of prevented me from really claiming this title gamer and disassociating myself from really thinking that owning a PC was for me. I kind of always thought that like me making gaming videos or me doing YouTube was just sort of going to be a thing of the past and not a permanent part of my life. I sort of just lost my confidence in that. And so I started to build more confidence and build more of my, I guess, hope or identity with being more of a film person, you know, studying cinema. I felt like that is something that I would be respected for and something that I could easily find confidence in. Uh, whereas gaming, I did not have as much confidence in at that point in my life. That is why I decided to not even consider building a PC. I mean, that time also in early 2019 was very like stressful with all this going on. I was just kind of, you know, focusing on getting through high school and getting to college. I did not think I'd be starting another channel. <laughs> I sort of given up on the gamer identity. But I noticed sort of throughout this time that I always kind of missed it. Like a little part of me always kind of felt like 
I guess, regret that this part of my life I was starting to give up on. I remember back in December of 2019, I just started college. I was living in my dorm, but I thought that Life is Strange 2 had a sale on Steam. The game was like $20 or something like that. And I remember hearing about Life is Strange 2 because I really liked the first game. The first game came out when I was like, just starting high school and I remember really liking that but I decided to purchase it even though I had a Mac I had no way of really playing it I bought Life is Strange 2 on Steam um, I had a gift card so technically I didn't spend the money but I did that I don't know growing up I never bought myself games because I never tried to consider myself a gamer because of that stereotype that people have when you hear the word gamer or you hear the word youtuber or anything like that but I love Life is Strange and I love playing certain video games even though I don't have a PC right now that's another goal I really have for the future is I really want to build a gaming PC and get back into gaming and streaming and making videos and then me buying Life is Strange 2 was me sort of um, developing a little bit of hope a glimmer of hope um, about reestablishing the gamer identity and claiming that again so that's where I was at like uh, late 2019, early 2020, I still had, you know, the iMac and it was just, you know, pushing through. Uh, never really knew when I was going to get a PC because obviously they're very expensive and I wanted this to be something I built by myself. 2020 happened, obviously. Uh, and I decided at the, towards the end of the year that I was going to start another YouTube channel. After just being sort of convicted of it, I was at home, so I wasn't even living in my dorm anymore, which meant I had really lesser excuses to actually start it again and to sort of um give hope to this dream again and this identity again and so i started the youtube channel in october of 2020 i still had the imac had no plans of really making real gaming videos i had other content and lists of other types of gaming adjacent videos I could make. And so I was able to make like my Sims 4 documentary. That was a reason that video came into fruition. I mentioned this in my update recently, but literally with no means of playing any sort of games on my iMac, I just started the channel and started making videos. And weeks within starting my YouTube channel, The Sims 3 64-bit came out on Mac, which I had no idea they were even planning on doing. I had no idea that that was even a thing that was supposed to come out. But that, now that gave me a way to make gaming videos uh, and so I started making sims videos and that's where my channel started to really take off. Months later I didn't just want to define myself as a sims channel I wanted to you know um, expand my horizons and uh, not just be known for one type of thing so I looked on steam and lo and behold I see Life is Strange 2 available on Mac. Uh, I just it was really amazing to see God sort of orchestrate all these things happening and just organizing my channel in a way I literally could have never anticipated and also with the ad revenue that I made mostly from my uh, Sims 4 documentary but also my other videos as well uh, God put the money in my AdSense that was more than enough to buy my PC that dollar amount was higher than the number I was even I even had in mind and so I felt like that number was my sign or was my uh, nudge to actually take this step forward into actually getting the PC. Literally a year ago, the idea of getting a PC and um, reclaiming that identity really is what it was. Not even knowing how this idea was going to become a reality, a year later I have the exact mo more than enough money in my Google AdSense account to purchase this PC and have the physical thing that is representative of this reclaiming of the gamer identity. To me, getting a PC was representative of this sort of transformation and acceptance of myself. I felt like I had a place and now I have kind of like purpose making these videos and making this type of content that I didn't really feel the same before with other creative projects I had. When I started this channel and things started to rise, what really, what that rise really did for me is started to boost my confidence and maybe I actually do have a place here and I have a message that is important and my experience and my history with sort of gaming on YouTube I feel like definitely contributes to how I run my channel today and I just feel such a stronger sense of purpose because I have a personal connection to the mission of this channel. It's a personal story of mine that I am paying homage to through my content. So a little bit of a timeline for you. February of 2021, 
The Sims 4 documentary popped off March of 2021. I saw my Google AdSense and actually started to think that this could become a reality. Now that I had the money in my account, I could actually officially start like the process of building the PC. April 2021 is when I proactively started this process. So me and my dad, we actually went to Micro Center. Um, and basically Micro Center, if you've never heard of it, it's just like a tech superstore. They sell all different types of tech and they also sell computer components, which I like, and they also offer custom builds. So because I knew about Micro Center and the services that they already had, I decided to go there and start uh, looking for parts. Okay, pause. So you literally can't hear what I'm saying in this clip because the TV in the background is so loud, but um, look how cute I look, y'all. Look at the makeup is popping. The hair is just done. The edges are laid, period, poo, -poo period. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, I was what I was saying in this clip is essentially I wanted to go in person to start choosing the components for my PC instead of just doing it online because I actually wanted to talk to someone. I wanted someone to give me advice or feedback who actually has knowledge in the field um, and just help me make the best decisions for my PC, making sure I wasn't spending unnecessary money in areas that I didn't necessarily have to spend the money for. And I just wanted to speak to a live voice, a live person. So I headed to Micro Center and we started this process. We've made it to Micro Center. We spoke to one of the people working there and they helped me come up with an initial list of potential components for my build. But that was informative, we learned a lot. This is just telling me everything that I, we need for the computer. It makes it real than just doing the internet search. Okay, okay, like what does this, this actually mean? And this is also not including the peripherals. Throughout the rest of the month of April, I started to upgrade my peripherals. So when I actually do get my PC and actually finalize the build, I would have already had peripherals and didn't have to think about that. Um, I think something that I also did not realize is like how much PC builds start to add up once you think about all the other extra parts that aren't even the computer itself. I knew ahead of time that I wanted to go for a more light color scheme for my desk. I kind of really liked this whole white and metallic aesthetic. Um, and so I didn't want like something that looked sort of like dark and gamery. <laughs> so I went online, I found this really cute keyboard that was kind of like a typewriter style. I bought this keyboard recently for the aesthetic mainly. <laughs> so we'll see if I can get used to this. I'm really excited. Little did I know how expensive gaming keyboards actually are. Like gaming keyboards, gaming mice, like this stuff is like expensive. They're like hundreds of dollars. Honestly, I'm not like really doing that much. <laughs> with the keyboard like I'm not like you know quick pressing different buttons and key things so I just wanted a cute keyboard that was aesthetic and that worked and that was comfortable and so I found this one it was about $60 I mainly got it because I also knew I wanted RGB lights because they're pretty <laughs> Um, but I was not trying to spend no $100 on a keyboard. And I also chose this keyboard because it had a wrist rest. I like my keyboard to be elevated slightly, so I like that addition. Oh, but this keyboard is loud as crap, by the way, so just keep that in mind if you decide to purchase it. Um, yeah, so she's cute, but she loud. <laughs> but overall, I'm pretty happy with the keyboard. Around the same time, I also got my mouse. So again, I didn't want to get a gaming mouse because little did I know how expensive those things are. So I just kind of got like a basic keyboard mouse, but I really like it. It's white, you know, again, match the aesthetic, match the decor. It has silver metallic detailing to match the keyboards. So they look like they could have been like a set together, but they weren't. And I also like this mouse because it has a forward and back button and you can also program them. I can't find the exact one that I own on Amazon. Amazon. So links down below will just be a similar one that I was also looking at. Everything I talk about in this video will be linked in the description down below. Another peripheral and sort of desk detail I bought in preparation for my PC uh, was my mic stand. So the previous mic stand that I had, I've had since like 2017. It was like a $15, you know, mic stand. It did the job. Uh, but given the fact that I had had the mic stands for five years, $15, is not gonna last that long. So I decided to invest in a slightly more durable one. And this is also a much longer mic stand. Um, so 
the other one was literally completely falling apart. Speaking of falling apart, my headphones were also at this point falling apart. I've had those headphones again since 2016. The ear cup was detached. They were not usable anymore. So I found the Corsair Virtuoso headset. I got them in the pearl color, which are so pretty. They're like this clean white with gold accent details. But I also was looking up some reviews and they seem to have a lot of different features that I was looking for. I just recently got this Amazon package with the uh, new headphones. How do you open this? Oh, here we go. Ooh, here they are. They're so pretty. I wanted these to kind of go with like my white and gold aesthetic. And then the little Corsair logos actually light up in our RGB. That's gonna be so pretty. So I love these headphones because it has the option for you to go wireless or wired. And again, they'll be linked down below. Last but not least, what I wanted to do to prepare my desk for my PC was add some decor. I decided to go with like, earthy tones, mostly inspired by my channel banner. So I found this mouse pad, which I thought matched. I thought it was really cute of this little black girl with a um, olive green like head wrap. I just wanted something simple, small, and that just got the job done. Again, going with this sort of neutral earthy tones theme, I decided to get a really cute print. It's actually from the artist who drew my profile picture. Her name is Princella. She also has a website where she sells prints. I decided on this print, which I think is really pretty, and I just like the colors. And I really like the back of the print where it has a Bible verse, Esther 414, which says, perhaps you are born for such a time as this. I think it kind of pulls the spaces together, pulls the color together, and I put it in this frame, which I love. I love the, what is it called? The It's like a bezel? around it. It just looks kind of vintage. Oh, this is dusty also. I need to... And then last but not least, I have this candle. Um, this candle is from this black owned business. They make like natural candles with more like healthier ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave their link in the description down below if you wanna support. To top off the space, I got this plant. It's super cute. I got it locally at a farmer's market and I fell in love. Um, I mainly got this snake plant because it doesn't need a lot of light. And I found this, this pot, we just had it around the house, but I felt like fit the vibe, the earthy colors. The last sort of peripheral in desk um, item I needed before I got my PC set up was a monitor. Again, these are things that I kind of forget to think about that you need with a PC because when you're building it all yourself, you actually have to get all the parts yourself. It doesn't just come with the computer. Um, so I was looking at 27 inch monitors on Amazon because that's how big my iMac um, screen was. And so I was just planning to go with the same 27 inches. And also because Mac definitely did spoil me um, with the their crispy displays, that's something Apple really does well is just having nice crispy screens. Um, I was definitely spoiled with the 5K Retina display. Everything on my iMac looks so good. The graphics just all look really good. And so I wanted to at least get a 4K monitor. And so I was like, you know, I've been used to this 4K life. It's just really hard to gonna go back to the 1080p life. So I was looking at 4K screens on Amazon, trying to find the least expensive ones. I came across these monitors by LG and I found one that was 32 inches uh, and it had all the specs that I was looking for. I had both a display port and HDMI ports, which is great because I could connect both my MacBook a Pro to this monitor as well as my uh, computer, my actual PC. It had built-in speakers. It's able to tilt and turn um, all the basic things and height adjust. So I had all the components that I was looking for in a monitor. And at the time, the 32 inch one was just under $300. It was like $299. Uh, so I was like, all right, I'm going to go with that one. <laughs> literally only bought this one because it was less expensive so yes it is like a small television but it's honestly not that big i'm just you know big monitor life out here okay <laughs> then in between april and may i started sort of developing this imposter syndrome i feel like a lot of creators a lot of well, just people in general deal with this i'm excited i'm kind of scared to get rid of my imac honestly it's this is just me kind of like it's also part of the enneagram 5 in me wanting to conserve my resources and also just anxiety of like not really knowing of the uncertain, you know, feeling like I'm gonna regret having the PC after getting rid of the iMac, but 
Um, but just feeling like I wasn't deserving of getting a PC, doubting again, like this, do I even deserve this? Do I even need this? Am I really gonna use it? Am I really a gamer enough to need a PC? Do I have the knowledge and the ability to have this? Just, you know, questioning all of these things. However, I eventually forced myself to pull the plug and follow through with this PC build. So the next piece I knew I needed to get in advance was the graphics card. This was the only component Micro Center didn't have in stock when I initially visited back in April, as they are in high demand and are often sold out. This is something I definitely wish I would have done earlier. Again, I had no prior knowledge to what building a computer is like or what the process is. And so um, graphics cards, I did not realize were often sold out <laughs> a lot of places. It's hard to get your hands on demanding graphics cards, like graphics cards that have high demand. So uh, I decided to look on Amazon and found some pretty good deals on refurbished or renewed graphics cards. But I'll get more into the specifics of the card I chose in the next section of the video. And the next step to actually getting this PC was selling my iMac. I figured I definitely don't need both. Maybe in the future when we ball in like that. <laughs> We can have multiple computers, but uh, yeah, I decided to just go full uh, PC and just um, upgrade it to be just a high end PC build mid to high. I don't know the actual kind of tiers of PC builds, but it costs a lot of money. So I'm going to say it's higher end <laughs> on the higher side. So my brother is actually trying to get into more um, music production. And so he was interested in buying my iMac off of me. So I sold it to him. Uh, we, you know, wiped it clean. I backed up all my important files on an external SSD and I sold my iMac to my brother. So I just got the payment from my brother for my iMac. So I'm going to go ahead and put this baby in the box. This is the mouse and keyboard. This is the end of an era, you guys. However, it was a little funny. Every time I made a purchase, my account was like, girl, uh, when did you have money? Hold, <laughs> let's put this money on hold real fast because, um, we're not used to you having coins <laughs> and finally after like a week and some days of like having waiting for all of my transactions to just be available in my bank account balance uh me and my dad went back to micro center to finalize our components and to get the pc actually built so i'm about to head back to micro center this is the first time going back since i initially looked at computer components back in april i am kind of nervous i don't know why i guess it's just i don't know what's like actually happening we're gonna actually purchase it y'all we're doing it also quick little otd because i think it's real cute today now let's go get my pc on this micro center visit, I got to speak to another employee in the PC building department who helped me finalize my component list. We got our case, motherboard, cooler, power supply, hard drive. And the only things up front are the processor, the RAM, the SSD, and Windows. So if you want to follow me, we can grab those. And finally, I purchased the computer and it went on to be built by micro center because I was going to do that myself. <laughs> So now I'm going to walk you through how I chose my components and just give you like a basic understanding of what each of the components are and what they do, what their function is. So if you are not a techie person, if you are an average human being, you're thinking about getting a PC, but you don't know where to start. You don't know. It just seems kind of intimidating to you. Hopefully this explanation can help you. Also, all the components that I put in my PC will be linked in the description down below. Uh, full disclosure though, they are affiliate links. So if you do decide to purchase anything from my description box that has a little asterisk next to them, um, at no extra cost to you, I will get a small commission every time a purchase is made. So if you're building a PC, go ahead and you know take advantage of those links. Uh, and thank you again for supporting the channel. I'm gonna start off with the GPU or the graphics processing unit sometimes also referred to as the video card. So if you hear any of these terms, it's all referring to the graphics card. The graphics card is basically what processes your graphics. It contributes to, you know, the crispy display and how crispy your graphics are, how your screen looks. That is all the work of the graphics card. Of course, coupled with your monitor as well. So for my graphics card, I knew I wanted something that had eight gigabytes of VRAM or video RAM. The more video RAM your graphics card has, the faster the frame rate and just the crispier, the smoother your graphics will look. 
some of the games that I wanted to play. Recommended I have like four gigabytes of VRAM and I wanted to make sure I had, you know, ample. I had more than that. And also on my iMac, I had four gigabytes of video RAM on my graphics card. And so I wanted to do like a bit of an upgrade from that. Um, so I decided to go with the MSI GeForce 1070 Ti and I have the version that has eight gigabytes. It's not the newest or latest and greatest graphics card, but after doing some research, I found that I can do like 1440p using this graphics card as well as up to like 4K, which is something that I was looking for. And it was not as crazy expensive as some other graphics card I was looking for. I will say something I did not know is that graphics card is definitely the single most expensive component that's going to go into your pc really good graphics cards can cost um up to thousands of dollars i was not trying to spend a thousand dollars because again i still had to buy the rest of the computer i would recommend when you're starting your process look at graphics cards first kind of find one that's in your budget that meets your you know requirements of what you want this is something i wish i would have started off with i wish i would have known had an idea of what graphics cards i wanted in the first place and then invested in that before doing the rest of the computer because a lot of what i'm going to be doing with video production and gaming is going to be a direct result of how well the graphics card can perform i would again look at the programs you tend to be frequently using as well as the games you tend to be uh, frequently playing look at what they recommend for your graphics card and sort of start there the next component is the cpu or the central processing unit so i know in school in like seventh grade we all learned that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell uh so the cpu is the powerhouse of your computer it is the mitochondria of your computer basically the brains of the operation so there are two different types of cpu brands there's intel and then there's ryzen i decided to go with intel just because all of my other previous computers had intel and so i had a bit more understanding about i guess how intel's specs work a little bit like i just understood it a little bit better i decided to go with the intel i9 10850k it's a 10th generation processor and it has 10 cores and the clock speed starts at 3.6 gigahertz this one i actually found on sale it was like 300 dollars off usually it's like 600 dollars, but i got it for like 319 which is really a great deal uh so that's why i decided to go with the intel i9 my imac had an i7 and it was also a quad core processor as the name implies the processor pretty much determines how fast your computer can process everything that's happening on your computer how fast it can run multiple applications that are open all at once the processor again is the brains of the operation so at least for intel processors i learned that uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of demanding things on your computer such as you know multimedia production and also gaming uh, the most important thing you need to be looking at is the number of cores your processor has and the gigahertz how fast your uh, processor can clock I guess so to speak I don't know everything I'm trying to figure out the terminology too here guys <laughs> so more importantly than the I number like I5 I7 or I9 um, honestly you need to be looking at just about how many cores your processor has if you're going to be doing a lot of different things on your computer all at once uh, as well as you know the clock speed how fast your processor can go at max capacity so if you're doing a lot of demanding stuff i read that closer to four uh, gigahertz is what you're gonna need to be looking for so three point something in that range uh, should be pretty good as well as as many cores that you can find for your budget the next component is the ram so ram stands for random access memory and as I was doing research, I found that this does not mean what I originally thought it meant. When I thought RAM, I just think it means storage because RAM is measured in gigabytes in storage. Uh, and so I thought that was like, oh, like if I have a 64 gigabyte phone, that means I have 64 gigabytes to store stuff on. But that's not quite how RAM works. RAM is like system storage. It's not like personal storage for your own personal files ram is used for like immediate use every time you open up a program so basically you think about your ram is what your system needs to open up programs on your computer to be able to run them it works in tandem with your processor and it's not for you boo boo <laughs> so to determine how much ram you need ram is always measured in eights uh go ahead and check the programs the system requir requirements for the programs you're going to be frequently using and 
the games you're gonna be frequently using and see what they recommend. So for Premiere Pro, they recommend 16 gigabytes. And so that's what I got. And I really wanted some RGB RAM because I wanted my PC to be pretty. So I got some RGB elements. So I got uh, 16 gigabytes of the Crucial Ballistic RAM. Of course, all the links will be in the description. And I think she looks really pretty in my PC. <laughs> so now that we learned that RAM is not where your personal files are stored, now let's talk about your stuff. For where your personal files are stored is on a hard drive. So there are two types of hard drives. There is a solid state drive and there is a physical hard drive, hard disk drive. The difference is a hard disk drive is comprised of moving parts. It has like a physical disk in it. It's kind of what you visually think of when you think of a hard drive. Uh, and these are less expensive because they're a little bit slower because of the moving parts. Um, and you can get more storage on a hard drive for less money than you can a solid state drive. Solid state drives, the perks is that they don't have moving parts. They have much faster load times and read times. So anything that you put on an SSD is just gonna load very quickly. Um, however, the trade-off is that they're a little bit more pricey. Uh, so you, you may have heard of like external hard drives or external SSDs. I have several of those to store my videos on. Um, but when I was building my PC, I decided to get both an internal SSD as well as an internal HDD. So for my SSD, I got a Samsung 980 EVO, one terabyte SSD. This is where I'm storing Premiere Pro. This is where I'm storing The Sims 3 and just all of my frequently accessed programs. And then for my hard drive, this is for like more of my mass storage. So this is where I'm gonna be storing like my raw video files, a lot of my photos, thumbnails, uh, just sort of other stuff that doesn't necessarily need to have like quick load times. So I have a Seagate Barracuda four terabyte HDD. So in total, my PC has five terabytes. One of those terabytes is the SSD and four of those is the HDD. There's also this other component to um, some more recent solid state drives. It's called PCIe, which I heard is like six times faster or I'm not sure the actual number. So just know that when you see the words PCIe, that means faster. The next component is the motherboard. It is the circuit board. It's what all of the components we just talked about connect to. So the motherboard I have is the Gigabyte Z590 Aurorus Pro. It has LGA 1200 with Wi-Fi. Um, and I learned that motherboards with Wi-Fi essentially mean that you don't have to get an external Wi-Fi port. Uh, so it's just something, uh, something else you just don't have to get as an addition to your computer. So I would recommend if you're gonna, you know, look for motherboards, look for ones with Wi-Fi. It just makes your life simpler. And if you do get a motherboard that does not have Wi-Fi, it just means you need to get a separate Wi-Fi adapter so that your computer can connect wirelessly, um, or you need to connect your computer to ethernet. Would recommend looking out for the Wi-Fi if you can. The next component is the power supply. So this is basically what transmits the energy from your outlet into your computer. It just determines how much power is being put into your PC, how much electrical power, as the name implies. Sometimes the power supply is also referred to as a PSU, which I don't know how I feel about that acronym, but if you see that word, that's what we are talking about. That's what this means. So to determine how much wattage of your power supply you actually need, I would recommend going to your graphics card and seeing how much power they recommend you have for that graphics card. I decided on an 850 watt power supply because that's what the guy at Micro Center recommended I get. So, <laughs> and that is ample power. That is definitely more than enough. The one that I have is the G-Skill 850 watt fully modular power supply. Um, I would recommend if you can, to look for fully modular ones. Um, again, they are a little bit more expensive when you get it fully modular. And basically what that means is that fully modular means that your power supply comes with no cables attached. So you get to only attach the cables that you need or the person building your PC can at only attach the cables that they need. Again, I'm not a technical person, so I don't know the technical things about it, but just reading the pros and cons of having a fully modular power supply versus a semi or non-modular power supply is that non-modular or semi-modular have either all cables attached or some cables attached, which means it'll have a messier look underneath your computer. Like uh, the cable management will be messier and just 
little bit more out of hand because you have all of the cables attached, which means it's gonna be more demanding on your computer, like more power is going through your computer, which also results in hotter temperatures of your computer. And one of the biggest things you wanna do, if especially if you're doing demanding things on your PCs, you wanna try to keep those temperatures down and keep your computer cool so it can continue running effectively. But fully modular power supplies have no cables attached. Your, you or your builder can only attach the cables that you need. It'll be a cleaner look, less cable management, and better performance because your power supply will be cooler since it won't be using as much power through the various cables. It only will be using the power that it needs to run. The next component is the cooling system. So this keeps your computer cool and at, you know, low temperature so yet your PC can run smoothly and not drop its performance. We did not spend all this money for no reason, okay? So we wanna keep it cool in these streets. <laughs> there are two cooling methods. There are fans, which is kind of the traditional, and there's also liquid cooling. So liquid cooling is going to be more expensive and basically the idea is that it's going to use liquids to also cool your system as opposed to just fans i don't again i don't know the technical things but just know liquid cooling is a newer cooling mechanism uh liquid cooling will be quieter on your pc and it'll be more efficient fans on the other hand there's nothing wrong with fans fans will just be fans they'll be louder when your computer's doing you know more demanding stuff one of the cons to liquid cooling though is that again it is more expensive to purchase and also to install and you can also have some technical problems because it is like liquid in your computer it's in like tubes obviously but like there is the possibility of having technical problems again i don't know how frequent that is but like i'm just saying that's a possibility so i decided to go with liquid cooling because my graphics card only has one fan and i also do a lot of demanding stuff on my computer a lot of video editing and then also the games i play like my fans do get loud <laughs> my fans have always kind of gotten loud in my computer so i wanted to try liquid cooling because i do a lot of demanding stuff on my pc and so i chose the corsair a h 11 5i elite capellix liquid cooler and it has 280 mm i don't know what mm is but that's apparently an important number but your cooling system just keeps your system cool so that your programs your pc will continue performing at its greatest potential if your pc can't keep cool performance will drop the next part is the case so this is like your pc's home this is where all the components all the parts we just discussed are going to be living your case could be anywhere from simple to fancy as long as all of your components fit in here properly that's all that matters the case that i decided on is the nzxt h510i this one has tempered glass integrated rgb lighting and it's i also got it in the white color because i just think that's clean again matches the aesthetic <laughs> something i actually want to do is decorate the side with stickers so i can't wait to do that i've already started ordering some so i'll give you guys an update eventually when i put my stickers on and then last but not least you need the operating system this is something i also kind of forgot that you needed again if you buy like pre-built computers or you have a laptop you don't only really think about stuff like the operating system or even if you are coming from mac like you don't have to actually pay for mac os it just comes with it uh but when you're building your own computer you actually need to purchase windows so it's not that expensive it's like a hundred dollars you can choose to download it on a disk drive or you can download it on a usb so yes i went ahead i purchased windows 10 that was an extra hundred dollars onto the build don't forget that you need to purchase that if you don't already own windows <laughs> and last but not least you pay somebody to do your pc build or you can do it yourself i personally wanted to add a couple years back onto my life I had no desire to actually build the computer. I just wanted to pick the parts out and be a part of that process. But I went ahead and paid Micro Center good money to build my PC. And I came back the next day and they set up everything. They literally, they installed Windows. Uh, they set up all my drivers so that I could customize the RGB lights. Um, they did all the other work for me. So calculating the total cost of the PC build after tax, all of the components from Micro Center coupled with the GPU I bought from Amazon total to about $2,290 for the complete build. If we add the expensive in, uh, fees from Micro Center, like I purchased a three-year warranty, which is $200, and I also paid for the, the cost to actually build the PC. Um, well, my dad actually offered to pay for me, so shout out to you, dad, thank you. And that was $250, meaning that's like about $450 in Micro Center expenses. 
equating to about $2,740 after all taxes and expenses from Micro Center. Adding up the cost of my peripherals and also desk decor, I spent about $665 on peripherals and decor. So about $2,955 in total for everything that you see here. <laughs> Needless to say, my computer most definitely was an investment, but now let's see what she looks like. So I just got the text that my PC build is done. Y'all, I am so excited. Uh, also, this lighting is popping in this parking lot. Um, hello, I kind of want to take some thumbnail pictures. I think I'm gonna do that when I get home. Let's go ahead and do a live unboxing. ASMR. Here she is. All right, these are cables. This is obviously to power it on, you know, for the power supply. Not sure, not too sure what this one is, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> oh my goodness. This might be harder than I expected. Thanks, Dad. Y'all, I wasn't even doing most of the work and I'm tired. <laughs> I'm put down my paper so I can like take some thumbnail pictures, the content creator and me. Before I set up the PC, need the thumbnail. All right, oh, this looks mysterious up here in front of the lights. I just finished taking some thumbnail pictures. You obviously saw the picture because you clicked on this video, but I'm really happy with them. So now I'm gonna tell, ask my dad to come help me take this up to my room because bro, this is so heavy. <laughs> Here's it all lit up. What are you doing? I'm taking a video. My nephew figured out how to put this on. You helped me? I help you. Yeah, you helped me press the button. I sure did. After a few days of getting all my programs set up, customizing the RGB lights, and transferring over the most important files from my external hard drives over to my PC, my computer was up and running. Oh, and I also learned that the cable I didn't know what to do with upon the initial unboxing is actually the Wi-Fi port from my motherboard. So I got that plugged in and figured out. So kind of to conclude this video, this story time, this, you know, PC part breakdown. I want to encourage y'all to go out and do the thing that you've been wanting to do, that you've been putting off, that you've been dreaming, the thing that's just been a thought and you never thought you would be the one. I'm just encouraging you to put one step in front of the other. Just take the first step, you know? It may not be a PC that you want, but it might be like a car or an apartment or a house or I don't know, just, it might be just something else, but I just wanna encourage you to just start that thing, starting a YouTube channel, whatever it might be. I don't want this video to be necessarily about material things or uh, feeling like you have to go out and you know buy a gaming PC. I know like that's not realistic for everybody and not everybody's in a position or has the money to spend on a computer. Um, and you obviously don't have to spend this much on a PC. I just wanted something that I could have for a long time. I didn't have to upgrade for a while. And so I invested in this and I acknowledge that not everybody can just go out and get a PC. Me having a PC is honestly, like I said earlier, I think it's less to do with the material item of a PC and more so me just claiming, reclaiming my identity and accepting the fact that all of my parts, all parts of my personality can exist. I want this to be about breaking down sort of self-imposed barriers that we place on our own lives that prevent us from living in abundance. Taking risks and betting on yourself is definitely not easy. Um, it's gonna feel uncomfortable. Uh, there are various parts in this process when building my PC where I was still feeling undeserving, even with the money in my account. Fighting through that imposter syndrome is not gonna be easy and it's not gonna feel comfortable. And so I feel like for me, getting this PC was one of those things. And so I wanna encourage y'all to do that thing of your life. Get the gaming PC of your life. Do the thing in your life that uh, may make you uncomfortable, but you feel like you have to do. So I hope this encourages you to bet on yourself on whatever area of life that you need to. That's all for this video. I have no idea how long this is going to be. I've been recording for a very long time, uh, but thank you all for watching. Thank you all for sticking through. I enjoy chatting with you, doing a little bit of story time and, you know, breaking down my PC build because this has been a long time in the process, a long time in the making. Uh, so yeah, my name is Asmara. Thank you so much for joining me today on this channel. My goal is to make the invisible visible through gaming, creativity, and conversation. So let's continue learning and growing together, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, everyone.